All right, so now that we've got our chloroform layer, we cannot analyze the quinine in chloroform because it will not fluoresce. If you leave it in the chloroform, the chloroform will actually quench the fluorescence. So we need to extract back into 0.05 molar sulfuric acid. And so ideally, we'll put these right next to their samples so we can keep them set straight. And uh, so what we're going to do, since we do not have an additional set of uh, extraction funnels, is we're going to drain these, give them a quick chloroform rinse, and then we'll rinse them with some of our acid before we do the extraction. So I rinse these with sulfuric acid. All right, so now when I do my extraction, now I'm going to take the entire chloroform sample, the chloroform layer that we extracted before, so the water or our blank layer, and our reference quinine. And our urine sample. We're going to extract into five milliliters of our sulfuric acid. And the sulfuric acid is less dense than the chloroform, so it's going to remain on the top. So now we're going to pipette into our nice clean little beakers right here. And then ultimately we'll transfer these layers into um, cuvettes to do our analysis. All right, so here we are to do our, ex our uh, extraction of the top layer, so sulfuric acid layer. We like to separate that without actually getting any of our chloroform layer. over to our quinine reference sample. And we'll move over to our urine sample. So I think I've got enough of each of my samples to do our analysis. All right, so we're going to do our analysis using the um, Carry Eclipse uh, fluorescent spectrophotometer. So if we take a look inside, this is our sample compartment. Basically what happens is you've got an excitation beam that comes in. It strikes the sample, excites the quinine molecules. When they're excited, um, they gain energy. When they relax, they release that energy as fluorescence, so they emit light at a different wavelength. And then, of course, the light is 360 degrees, and so we have a detector off at a right angle from our excitation beam. And, uh, and so we scan and we detect the wavelength um, at which we're emitting, and we can then uh, compare the emission spectra uh, to quantify the amount of quinine that's in there. Um, so this is our software. I actually have this set up uh, to do an emission scan. So we know the excitation is 350 nan nanometers is where we absorb the energy. And so we're going to scan from 400, and six, 400 to 600 nanometers. Um, the uh, lab manual suggested, I think, using 445 nanometers. Um, I've done a preliminary scan using the um, uh, 1 ppm quinine solution. And we're actually seeing that the most of the fluorescence is right around 455 nanometers. And so uh, that's most likely where we're going to be measuring. But we'll do a scan for each of our sample when we do our analysis. So we're going to start with a blank, and then we'll measure the reference sample, and then we will measure the urine sample. 
So I have these labeled. So we had our reference sample had the white label and our urine sample had an orange label. And uh, we have no label on our blank. So actually I'm going to do the reference sample first so we can actually figure out what wavelength we want to see. So um, this is our reference sample. Now we're using a four-sided quartz cuvette. And that's significant because if we don't use quartz, we're not um, transparent in the UV range, and, and uh, 350 is right on the edge of the UV range. Um, so we're exciting with ultraviolet light, despite the fact that the emission is at 455 nanometers, putting it in the visible range, which is why we actually see the fluorescence, it looks slightly blue. So we're gonna take our quartz cuvette. This is also transparent on four sides, unlike the UV vis cuvettes, because we have to measure at a 90 degree angle. So we've got a cuvette placed. And so we're going to start our scan. And this is it's our quinine reference standard. Yep. So there's our scans. You can see we have a peak right around here. Our peak is right around 450. I guess we can measure our blank next. Continue to measure the blank and the sample, and the uh, data is going to be posted on Blackboard for you.